Hello everyone, welcome to the Viral Structure class. My name is Natalia Ramos and I'm a professor at the Faculta de Ciencias of the Universidad de la República and I'm a part of the Virology Lab. Today I'm going to talk about the variability in size and shape of viruses, the composition of viral particles and the main concepts related to viral structure. As you know, viruses are small and we need an electron microscope to see them. Viral particles come in many sizes, usually between 20 and 300 nanometers. For example, sarcoviruses are the smallest viruses that infect mammals, and pox viruses are among the larger known viruses. But this was true until the discovery of mammavirus in 2003. The discovery of these giant viruses has challenged the concept of viruses because they have a very complex structure and a size that makes them visible under a light microscope. Even today, other giant viruses have been discovered, such as Pandora viruses or Tuban viruses, which are about one micron in size. And very particles come not only in different sizes, but also in different shapes. Under the electron microscope, most viruses appears uh, to be spherical, as we can see in figures A and B, or rod shaped, as we can see in figure C. However, there are more complex morphologies, such as bacteriophages, which has a head and a tail, or mimiviruses, which have the fibrils around the capsid, or over the shaped capsid of pithoviruses, another giant virus. And in addition, there, there are viruses with present pleomorphic forms, such as paramyxoviruses, which uh, we can see in the figure sheet. We call viron to the infectious viral particle. And viruses are usually non-enveloped or enveloped. And in the case of non-enveloped viruses, a protein shell called the capsid or coat surrounds the genome. And the genome can be DNA or RNA. And there are seven different types of viral genomes. The capsid, on the other hand, as we will see below, can be helical or icosahedral or even complex. Enveloped viruses has an external viral membrane, which is a host cell debris lipid bilayer carrying viral glycoproteins. The nucleocapsid, also called core, is the nucleic acid protein assembly within the particle used when it's a discrete substructure. It is clear in the case of HIV, which has a capsid and nucleocapsid. But it can also be used for herpes virus, which is an enveloped virus, and the capsid can be called nucleocapsid because it's a substructure of the particle. You can see the nucleocapsid, the genome inside, and here the envelope. And in this figure, we can see uh, an enveloped virus, a poliovirus, which is much smaller than a press virus, and its size is more similar to that of a ribosome. And what are the functions of these viral proteins? Well, first, the protection of the genome, which can be damaged irreversible by chemical and physical agent, including enzymes, stream of pH or temperature, and various forms of natural radiation. Second, the delivery of the genome into the cell, binding to external receptor of the host cell and then uncoating result in the release of the viral genome into the appropriate cellular compartment to initiate the genome replication. And last, the interaction, the interaction with the host, the interaction with cellular components for transport to intracellular sites of assembly, for example, or interaction with cellular components to ensure an efficient infection cycle. To fulfill these functions, viral particles are metastable. This is that the virons switch between different conformational states. Virons are stable enough to protect the virus genome, 
but must also attach to a suitable, suitable host and deliver the genome into the cell, where the particle is at least partially disassembled. The conformational transition of the viral particles allow the virus to enter the cell and facilitate the release of viral genetic material into the cell. The disadvantage of this metastability is the possible loss of viral infectivity under unsuitable external conditions. So, virons are not sample inert structures. They are molecular machines that play an active role in delivery of the nucleolysis genome to the appropriate host cell and an initiation of the reproductive cycle. Well, uh, there are different tools with different resolution uh, to study the viral structure, the viral structure. In the case of the electron microscopy, samples are stained with negative contrast and this technique is a widely used method for the examination of morphology of viral particles where we can see the morpho morphological units or capsomers as surface snob, knobs or projections and its resolution is limited to permit molecular interpretation. On the other hand, in the cryo-electron microscopy, Samples are rapidly, are rapidly frozen and examined at very low temperatures, preserving natural structure. This method can increase resolution to the atomic level when images are analyzing with computers and mathematical methods that can reconstruct three-dimensional structures. Last, X-ray crystallography has provided high-resolution insight into the structure of many plants and animal viruses. However, not all viruses form suitable crystal. So, within the past decade, cryo-electron microscopy combined with cryotomography have become standard tools of structural biology. In viral structure, when we're talking about a subunit, we are talking about a single folded polypeptide chain. The shelly roll fall of the viral subunit was observed in many cosetral capsid proteins during the first 12 years of viral crystallography. The shelly roll fall has a topology of eight beta strands organized in two antiparallel sheets. The, fish, the figure shows a diagram of the viral shelly roll tertiary structure its topology and its arrangement in a sample icosahedral particle. In the topological representation, beta strands are represented by yellow or red arrows corresponding to their sheets in the folded structure, and the green uh, cylinders represent helices that are normally conserved. As you can see, the CD, EF, and GH loops often contain significant insertions. And it is also important to understand other two important terms when we're talking about viral structure. Uh, one important concept is the structural unit or protomer, which is the basic unit that forms the capsid or nucleocapsid, and it is an asymmetric unit that comprises one protein subunit or, se or several, and the same subunit or different protein subunits. And on the other hand, the morphological unit, or capsomer, which is the surface structure of the capsid or nucleocapsid that is visualized under the electron microscope. The cluster of protomers are, for example, the pentamers or hexamers, which we will talk about later. And Watson and Crick did more than discover DNA structure. Almost 70 years ago, they established the principles of viral particle construction. Since the coding, coding capacity of viral genomes is very limited, they propose that such genetic economy dictates that capsids be built from identical copies of a small number of viral proteins with structural properties that allow regular and repetitive interaction between them. These proteins are arranged to maximize contacts and non-covalent binding between subunit and structural units. The repetition of such, such interactions between a limited number of proteins 
result in an regular structure with symmetry. And they are also observed that most virus particles appear to be rod shaped or spherical under the electron microscope. And this is because there are two types of symmetry the helical and icosaedra. In the helical symmetry, the structural units are arranged in a regular helix around the nucleate axis. This is the case for certain, certain plant viruses such as tobacco mosaic virus and for the nucleocapsid of some enveloped animal viruses such as influenza virus, rabies virus and Ebola virus. And in a simple helical symmetry, multiple identical copies of a protein subunit are arranged around the circumference of a cycle, forming discs that sit on top of each other. It is an open structure. Any size of nucleic acid can be packaged by varying the length of the helix. It is defined by the amplitude or the diameter of the helix and the height. The height of the helix is given by the pitch and the number of turn uh, and the number of turn of the helix. The pitch is determined by the axial rays or per subunit and the number of subunits uh, per turn. The best understood helical nucleocapsid is the tobacco mosaic virus, the first virus to be identified. And the nucleocapsid has multiple copies of a single protein subunit which package a single molecule of positive strand RNA of about 6,400 nucleotides in length. If we know that each subunit binds three nucleotides of the genome, how many subunits does the capsid have? 6,400 divided by 3 makes about 2,153 protomers. And if I know the pitch and the axial rise and the number of subunits per turn, I can calculate the height of the helix. The number of turns can be calculated using the number per turn, which is 16.3, and the total number of protomers. So, 2,153 divided by 16.3 uh, three give us 131 number of turn of the helix. Since we have the pitch, the height of the helix, of the helix is 300 nanometers. On the other hand, capsids with icosahedral symmetry are the most common. Unlike helical capsid, icosahedral capsids are closed structures with a fixed internal volume. An icosahedron is a solid with 20 triangular faces and 12 vertices. Here you can see an icosahedron. And each of the 20 faces of an icosahedron is an equilateral triangle that are related by two, three, and five-fold axes of rotational symmetry. Five such triangles interact at each of the 12 vertices in the five-fold axis. Two triangles interact at each two fold axis and three triangles interact at its three fold axis. And in the simplest icosahedral capsid, each triangular face of the icosahedron corresponds to a trimmer of a single viral protein, the subunit. Since an icosahedron has 20 faces, 60 identical subunits, 3 per 20 faces, is the minimum number needed to build a capsid with icosahedral symmetry. Each subunit interact with the others through identical interaction on different axes of, uh, of rotational symmetry. 
This type of capsis corresponds to a T or triangulation number equal to 1 that we will see the concept in the following slides. And in this case, each subunit corresponds to the structural unit. An example of a capsid built with the minimum number of subunits is the capsid of porcine circovirus tattoo, which in fact peaks and is a very small and non-blow virus of about 20 nanometers with a genome of about 1,800 nucleotides. Five subunits of the capsid protein, protein or five protomers interact at each of the 12 vertices observer, observed under the electron microscope as pentamers, which are the morphological units or capsomers. In total, the capsid of PCB2 has 12 pentamers. And here is the three-dimensional structure of the PCB2 cap protein, which consists of a canonical Bilancelli roll composed, composed of eight beta strands linked by seven loops that contribute to the viral surface features, except for loop Fg, and stabilize the capsid through extensive interaction with neighboring loops. Each loop is represented in the figure by a different color, colors in the 3D structure. For example, the fivefold axes of PCB2 are shown in the image of the right with loops, with loops DE in blue, BC in red, and HI in magenta. Loops BC and HI define the knob-like protrusion extending furthest from the capsule surface and decorating the fivefold axis. So now you know how the smallest capsids are made, but how are the larger costadral capsid made? Well, to make larger capsid, additional subunits must be included. In fact, the capsid of most animal viruses are made up of many more than 60 subunits and can accommodate quite large genomes. Caspar and Clue have developed a theoretical model based on two important concepts, the quasi-equivalence and the triangulation number. When the capsid is made up of more than 60 subunits, the interaction between them are similar or quasi-equivalent but not identical, and each subunit can be in one of three different structural environments, design, A, B, or C. In larger capsules, the structural unit consists of, consists of more than one protein subunit. And these structural units are associated not only in pentamers but also in examples. In the smallest structure, five subunits make five symmetrical contacts at each of the 12 vertices called pentamers. But in a larger assembly, for example with 180 subunits, this arrangement is retained at the 12 vertices, but the additional 120 subunits form clusters with six-fold symmetry called examers. So, capsids with 180 subunits have 12 pentamers and 20 examers. The number of examers in the structure depends on the triangulation number. And the other important concept is the triangulation, which describes the triangular phase of an icosahedral structure in terms of its subdivision into smaller triangles called facets and it determines the size of, a, of the capsid. Triangulation is a concept inspired by geodesic domes where increasing the frequency of subdivision of phases of an icosahedron increased the sphericity. The higher the T number, the more subunit make up the capsid. And what is the triangulation number? 
The T is the number of small equilateral triangles or facets resulting from the subdivision of the fundamental phase of the icosahedron. And if each facet is equivalent to the same structure, the total number of subunits is 60T. For example, in the case of T equal 4, the fundamental phase of the icosahedron is divided in four facets. One, two, three, and four. And the total number of units is 240. 60 units are arranged in 12 pentamers and 180 in 30 examers. In a T equal 4, the total of morphological units are 12 plus 30, 42. How T is determined? T is defined uh, by the Casper and Kluck model by the vector shown in two adjacent pentamers on a hexagonal lattice. H and K given the number of steps to connect the two nearest pentamers along the main directions of the hexagonal, hexagonal lattice. T is defined by this equation. And, for example, in T equal 1, with this fundamental phase, to go to this pentamer, to this pentamer, k is equal to 1, and h is equal to 0. On the other hand, in a t equal 3, this is the fundamental phase, to go from this pentamer to this pentamer, h is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1. For example, in this hexagonal lattice, uh, for a t equal 4, to go to this pentamer to this pentamer, h is 2 and k is 0. And in a t equal 9, and to go to this pentamer to this pentamer, h is equal to 3 and k is equal to 0. There are different types of icosahedron, and it is important to note that there are triangle numbers that are not possible with the model of Casper and Crow. And as I said before, the structural unit is the smallest unit that can give rise to the complete structure when replicates according to the rules of the cosaedral symmetry. In T equal 1, the structural unit is a single protein, the subunit, whereas, for example, in T equal 3, the structural unit is a homotrimer, as you can see in light blue. The T number can also be defined as the number of subunits that make up the structural units. For example, as the structural unit is repeated 60 times always, in a, 13, in a T equal 13 capsid, the structural units contain 13 subunits, and the total number of subunits is 780. 60 uh, for example, in T equal 4, the structural units has 4 subunits and the total number of subunits are 240. Something to consider is that although the arrangement of the 60 T subunit in rings of 5 and 6 is a geometrical necessity, the grouping of this subunit into pentamers and examers is not. Grouping into 20 T trimmers or 30 T dimmers or 60 T monomers is also possible. And in addition, there are viruses that do not follow the Caspar and Kluge model. For example, 
The case of the coronavirus, the capsid is composed of 60 asymmetric units composed each of three proteins for a total of 180 subunits. But these capsid do not have T equal 3 symmetry as, as described by Kaspar and Kluge model because the basic unit is composed of three different proteins BP1, BP2, and BP3. And BP3. Three. Since the three subunits are morphologically very similar, similar but not identical, the structure is thus a pseudo T equal 3. And there are also complex capsids. These can be structures that do not follow quasi equivalence rules, or viruses with different components of different symmetries, or viruses with globally asymmetrical structures. Some clearest examples of complex capsids are the adenovirus capsid, which has long fibers on its 12 vertices, and um, viral proteins that help stabilize the capsid shell called semiproteins. proteins. And another example is rotavirus, which have several shells. Or the HIV capsid, which is a, a conical uh, shape. As an example of structures that do not follow quasi-equivalence rules, we have the capsid of the polymavirus and papillomavirus that are built with 360 subunits, corresponding to the T equal 6, but this triangulation number is excluded by the rules formulated that Caspar and Klug. The structural unit is a pentamer of the marginal structural protein BP1 for uh, polymaviruses or L1 for papillomavirus. The capsid is filled from 72 such pentamers. 12 sub, uh, structural units occupy the 12 uh, positions of 5 fold rotationally symmetry in which each is surrounded by 5 neighbors. Each of the remaining 60 pentamers is around by six neighbors at position of six-fold rotational symmetry in the capsid, consequently actually behaves as if it were at t equals seven. And as an example of viruses with different components with different symmetries, we have the factory phages, which contains parts with both icosahedral and helical symmetry. The head of the mature T4 particle, an elongate icosahedron, is made up of hexamers of a single viral protein, HP23, uh, and like the other caps considered so far, two T numbers are needed to describe the organization of the HP23, uh, the T equal uh, 13, and the elongate midsection T equal uh, 20. And like the head, the 100 nanometers long tail, uh, which consists of two protein layers, has helical symmetry. And an example of a globally symmetrical structure is the mammavirus. Due to their large size, mammavirus have a very compact capsid with a T of approximately 1,000. And the capsid contain at least 60,000 subunits. In addition, mammavirus have special structural features, including the dense coat of long fibers that covers the entire outer surface except of a vertex. This is a the fibers, and this vertex consists this vertex consists of a unique starfish-shaped structure called the stargate the most distinctive structural element of this virus. This is the target. And this. And the targets open within the host acantomeopolyphile cell to facilitate the release of the double strand DNA genome. This particular feature gives the mammavirus capsid a pseudoicosahedral structure. Well, the viral assembly. The viral assembly is a process that results in a population of viral particles that is generally not homogeneous. Not all of the particles formed are infectious, 
an excess of mineral precursor macromolecules and empty capsids remain in the cell. This process can occur in different cellular compartments as a, such as cytoplasm, membrane and nucleus. If often requires the transport of viral components to the appropriate sites, and in some cases, a maturation stage is required to generate infection viral particles. The simplest capsid can uh, self assemble. In the case of porcine circovirus type 2, proteins, a subunit, must be in close proximity and certain pH or cell condition must be present for self assembly to occur. The mechanism is mainly governed by thermodynamics as an assembly cinetics, and these assembly reactions are driven by the high concentration of protein subunits synthesized in infected cells. And on the other hand, viruses with a more complex structure require morphogenetic factors that are not part of the structure for assembly and maturation. In the case of polyvirus, successive cleavage of the precursor V1 causes structural changes in the probe that led to their aggregation. And then, after assembly, the proteins are modified by the viral proteasid 3CD to form the Phys S structural units. This. And in the assisted assembly, some structural units are assembled with the help of viral chaperonas, such as the adenoviral L4 protein of 100 kilodalton, which is uh, required for the formation of the exon trimmer from the protein 2 monomer. An early calicosahedral or complex irregular capsids can be enveloped by membranes derived from the host cell. The envelope is acquired by a process called hemination. They might be cells membranes of different origins. Embedded in the membrane are viral proteins, the vast majority of which are glycoproteins that carry covalently linked as sugar change or oligosaccharides. The presence of viral glycoproteins in specific cell membranes determine the site of assembly and envelope acquisition. The viral glycoproteins are integral membrane proteins uh, that call peplomers or spicules, and the ectodomains have the function of binding, uh, fun fusion, enzymatic activities, and arctogenic sites. And on the other hand, the inner domains interact with other components of the viron. And sometimes they are used to ensure the capsid during the assembly. Well, the extracellular domain of viral glycoproteins can be a trimmer or a dimmer, perpendicular or parallel to the membrane. The case of the human influenza virus maglutinin protein is a trimmer uh, containing a globular head and a long stem. In contrast, the outer domain of the flavivirus E protein is a flat, uh, elongate dimmer that lies on the surface of the viral membrane rather than protruding from it as a demoglutinin. There are different forms of inter interaction between capsid and envelope proteins. This interaction can be direct through a matrix protein or via multiprotein layer. This is an example of a direct interaction. This interaction results in a symmetrical arrangement of the envelope glycoproteins. The capsid of the alpha virus is the T equal 4 and consists of 240 subunits. And in the outer glycoprotein layer also contains 240 subunit copies of the envelope proteins E1 and E2 which forms heterodimers and are also organized in a T equal for ecocellular shell. And for that reason, the right interaction confer a symmetrical arrangement of the envelope speak. Paramaxoviruses, glycoproteins, interact with the matrix protein associated with the inner surface 
and in this case organization and symmetry of the internal structure is not necessarily evident in the outer glycoprotein coat. It's for the reason that these virus have a pleomorphic form. Herpes virus is an example of interaction via multiple layers and the glycoprotein project of two different internal structures, the capsid or, or nucleocapsid, which surrounds the DNA genome, and the protein layer that surrounds this structure called the tegument. Herpes viruses have a T equal 16, and it's an overall asymmetric structure. One of the 12 vertices is not occupied by a BP5 pentagon, but by a single structure called the portal. Here is the portal. And the tegument contains more than 20 viral proteins and cellular components. Some are, are arranged with icosahedral symmetry, but they are in contact uh, because they are in contact with the capsid. However, some tegument proteins are not evenly distributed around the capsid. And to finish, viral particles may also contain inside additional viral proteins or other components that are generally present at much lower concentration, but are essentially or important for an efficient infection cycle. Many types of viral particles contain enzymes necessary for the synthesis of viral nucleic acid, acids, or cellular components uh, that have been extracted from the cell. Well, that's all. Thank you for the invitation, and feel free to ask any question you may have.